uh, 10.30 than 8.45 up to the family of God. Uh, these people kind of came in and they were white, a little whiter than the last week. So, uh, welcome to our worship service today. If you are uh, visiting, please uh, feel free to introduce yourself to me uh, after worship. We, we're doing coffee before, so uh, that makes it a little bit more difficult for me to get to know you. So you might have to be very intentional about that at the end of the worship service. Take a moment and make sure you come up and say hi. Um, I invite you to go through the announcements with me this morning. Uh, there are a number of them. Tomorrow, for those of you who are interested in uh, maybe taking a, a new look at our garden out here, we, we kind of let it grow. It reminds me a little bit of a forest. But we're going to try and take a look at that and uh, redo that a little bit. In preparation for the Sunday the 30th, when we're going to have an outdoor worship service. And so we might have to use some of that space uh, for our outdoor worship service. So those are two announcements in one. Just have an help and don't forget the outdoor service. Then you will notice that uh, our youth are getting ready to go on a trip. I'm already getting excited about that. We're going to do a commissioning for the kids when we do that uh, service. Um, either the one right before they leave or the week before. We're not sure yet, but I have to meet with them on the 28th to figure out what we're going to be doing. But uh, if you take a look at the other announcements, there are a couple other things going on. Wednesday of this uh, week, uh, we also from 9 o'clock on 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I don't want to say 9 instead of 1. Uh, 1 p.m. There's a church clean. Uh, we're going to get the kitchen a little bit. I'm focusing in on that. And then on June 29th, uh, plenty of doing some painting in the lower level in the kitchen area. So you might want to take and be a part of that. I think those are the announcements that need to be made today. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mark. I have that. It's here. <laughs> um, take that on just for a minute. We we're very pleased we were able to get all of the quilts to the correct location. And, but they school, will, and the school kids. And the school kids. But they invite us to help participate in doing what's necessary to get them to where they are going. And so there are some costs to that. And so we want to be generous about that and make sure that we can get them to uh, lose the world relief. If you want to, um, just put whatever you can uh, in the envelope. And if you can put that in the, uh, uh, the place at the back of the church, after the worship, uh, that will go to defer that cost of shipping those quilts and school kits. Thank you, Barb, for reminding me of that. Any other announcements? Because I can forget things here and there. If not, uh, I invite you just to kind of prepare your hearts for worship with our uh, prelude music. You are shown God's mercy. 
You are forgiven love into abundant life. Amen. We're going to be standing for our gathering hymn is number 673. 673.
You are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Beginning 
with verse 26. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grains in the head. But when the grain is ripe, and once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air may make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I am hoping I have some young people who come forth for the children's message today.
and I'm a grandpa too. And a lot of times, as grandpas and fathers, I know for myself, I tend to have my issues way out there. Where are you going to school? What are you doing? What's going on? What I would miss is what's right in my mind. Okay? So I just want to, as, a, as an encouragement, fathers, grandpas, great to keep your eyes on the horizon. Good stuff. We need people who look to the horizon. But we also need to remember to take care of you. Eat your beans, have your veggies, say your prayers. No one has to Thanks. Just a little thought for us, fathers and grandpas today. So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. I guess, it's so good to, to be here this morning, and especially with the kids. Uh, thank you, parents and grandparents, for bringing your kids with us today. That is a, a joy for me. Children's rooms are great, and I don't mind looking to the, an audience that I never see, but it's kind of nice to grow up with the kids and kind of see what's going on, uh, kind of in that day-to-day -day kind of stuff. So, Grace and peace be with you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and also from the Spirit, the risen Christ, who lives inside of us. Amen. So, there is a surprise in the Gospel of Mark. It began last week. Um, we talked a little bit about this uh, discussion that happens between Jesus and some of the uh, leaders of the synagogue and, and the church. And they're going back and forth. Um, uh, as you know, Matthew's, uh, or excuse me, Mark's Gospel is the first of the Gospels that was written. Both Matthew and Luke borrow heavily from Mark in the writing and kind of making their own kind of attempt at telling the story of who Jesus was and what happened. And perhaps you were like me, intrigued by last week's story of Jesus and these religious leaders who uh, try and discredit him. Uh, they call him Beelzebul, uh, which, as I said, was what? The Lord of the donkey. That's what Beelzebul means. So that's like, that's like, Great intro. You don't have an intro like that very often. You better take advantage of that one. It's a good one. So they call him, uh, hoping, I think, to, to uh, somehow put him down, right? To corral Jesus and have everybody see him in a very uh, bad way. But it backfires on that. The Lord of the Donkey, that label not only doesn't uh, somehow face Jesus, but only further confirms one of the central messages of the Gospels. Paul is the one who kind of picks up on this in the, in the epistles. We preach Christ crucified and Him risen from the dead. And that's a very strong and important message that we can also uh, gather and take home with us today. The other message from last week is that not ever, even death can stop the love of God for each one of us. We can't stop it. No matter what means we call it, uh, him, it's not going to stop that love. This uh, strong man that uh, Jesus talks about, as it needs to be tied up and put in his place, uh, is exactly what happens, and it is not bound until Jesus comes along and binds it up. And even with death is thrown at Jesus, uh, God's forgiveness is greater than the strong man. Now, I suppose that the message is sufficient for us to ponder for a good long time. But here's the problem I have, and that is that Mark does not stop with last week's text. Mark continues to write, and he picks up a little bit of this, this Beelzebul, uh, the Lord of the Dung Heap again. Immediately following this story, that story from last week, is Jesus' parable about the sower. And you know that story, right? You know the story, uh, the story of the sower. Uh, Jesus says, the sower goes out, he throws his seed, and some falls on good ground, some falls on hard the ground, some of this gets scorched by the sun, birds come on, and he did up all this stuff about where the seed falls. All kinds of soil, various results. And then comes today's parable, and it's the parable of the mustard seed. But here's what kind of gets me, because I don't believe in coincidences, especially with the scriptures. I don't believe that the words are written for just no reason whatsoever. You see, these, there is more here than we want to talk about. And the, the idea of seeds is very important in this text. In fact, in the Greek, the word for seed 
seed, there's like four different words for that word seed. Well, in English, we only get one word. And the most common are sporma, and the other is sperma. Just like it sounds, sporma is the word used for seed to describe a seed that is in the form of a spore. And so it is a seed that is spread by the wind, by the water, or by some natural something else. On the other hand, sperma describes seeds that are spread through animal movements. The animals eat these seeds from grass and grazing, and then deposit them in the form of dung in a different location, thus spreading the seed in a different and variety of places and environments. Now let me ask you this. Is that just coincidence? See, I don't think so. I don't think that Mark, that Mark uses that word seed in that way without also referring back to last Sunday's text. So the crowds are still there. They're listening to Jesus. In fact, the multitudes were so great. And coming from all different places of the Middle East there, so Jesus gets into a boat. And he begins to talk to them in parables from the boat. And so they're so uh, close to him. The sower and the mustard seed are the stories he tells. Again, Coincidence? I don't think so. Hey, when you are Beelzebub, the Lord of the Donkey, make the best of it, okay? If that's your title, you better do something with that. So the kingdom of God, Jesus says, is like a sperm of mustard seed. The seed, uh, the kind of seed that is spread like dung on the new and various soils. A sperm of seed that when heard cannot be stopped, not by name calling or pulling, not even by death itself. If there were a sign describing the sea by the sea, it would probably read something like, warning, dumb seeds being full around here. Okay? That's what's happening. I believe that the message that Jesus is trying to convey is something that is very important for us. It comes along with the second message of the parable. The seed is like the mustard seed. It is the smallest of seeds, but it is when it is sown on the ground. Notice something about that. In the little bit about the sower prior, it's all about the soil, right? Good soil, bad soil, hard soil, rocky soil, all that stuff. Not mustard seed. The shift isn't there. Now it's not the soil that's important, but the seed itself. And then in that sense, the mustard seed grows no matter what happens. Jesus isn't just using the, uh, uh, the, uh, the seed to tell us uh, that we need to be better spoiled. He's now telling us that we need to remember that the seed is sown and the message cannot be stopped. It grows and forms uh, large branches, uh, this mustard seed, and I suppose it might also create shade nest for people. Now, a text study is past for me. It was over a superior text study, and um, uh, Pastor Tanner, uh, who was formerly on the Family of God before I got there, and we were gathered around the table and talking about this, he says, you know what? I don't like this. I don't like this parable. <laughs> he goes, why? I said, what was going on? I said, I'll tell you why, because mustard seed isn't the smallest of seeds. There's all kinds of smaller seeds in that one. And it really kind of produces silks for branches. On top of that, he says, you know that goats won't even eat mustard? <laughs> he says, I don't think it's a very good parable at all for branches. And maybe it wouldn't be, except for one thing. We began to talk about that. We talked about why is mustard seed used here? And it came to our awareness that, as we did the search, that the mustard seed fits the story and situation. Because although it's not the smallest, and although it supports very little branches and birds, it's because it's an invasive plant. It's almost impossible to eradicate from a soil. That's why it's used. I remember when I was a kid, my uncle used to uh, plant uh, bluegrass along the side of his fields. That was one way to kind of utilize that, that place where the ground's a little bit sloped and stuff. And, we would go on, uh, my cousins and I, he used to give that produce from those, the side of the field to his sons and, and me. And I mean, we'd, go and, we'd go and harvest those bluegrass. But if we got, if mustard seed had gotten into that grass, 
we couldn't sell it because no one wants to put uh, mustard seed uh, and bluegrass in front of their lawns because it'll take over. Now a parable begins to make sense, doesn't it? I mean, now when you start thinking about that, Jesus is warning us that once the love of God gets out, once we've experienced that, um, it will not be eradicated from your heart. Take a moment, right now. What would you do, what would you be without the love of Christ? Can you imagine what life would be like without the assurance that although you are never free from the effects of sin and death in your life, although you are never free from the hardness of your heart or the easy way in which sometimes seeds hit soil of the heart, that Jesus' death and resurrection promise you that His love for you is more powerful than that, is more powerful than sin, more powerful than death. That His grace is yours as His gift to you. And that try as hard as evil tries, it cannot eradicate the good news of the love of Christ in your hearing, so that you will know, right? The hearing of the Word of God, you will know that God loves you. You and I, we are the mustard seed. We are seeds also that have been sown. Uh, the love of God comes in our hearts and then we immediately what? That is where now the story of the shade and the branches becomes effective. Now we know that since the love of God can't be eradicated from us, we too realize that any seed that we throw out to the Word of God that word takes hold and it does its job, its business. God is with you. God is always with you. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how deep the dung gets, God will never leave you or forsake you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let it be so. With that, we join and sing the theme of the day, which is number 824.
price of each other this morning? We sold it.
want to welcome you all to the Holy Week today, and you are all welcome to come and partake uh, at the table that Jesus sets for us. Uh, as Jesus has set this table, he invites us to come and to receive the bread and the wine and the grape juice in remembrance of him. He invites you to place your hand down as you receive uh, the wafer. Uh, if you need a little free a wafer, just let me know. We can do that. As you get the, the way to the chalice, there are both wafers and wine available to you. You're welcome to choose whichever one suits I use the best. I also, just pour the wine, or the wine, just pour the wine and that is fine. I just pour the water and that is fine. And there you are welcome to go and get your fingers and take the rest of the cost and remember your baptism in the Christ, death, and resurrection. Most importantly, come now, all of you, for this table of the session.
way of things. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever have. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand to receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, it is uh, hymn number 547.